Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining our Q2 video conference. Uh, as usual, we are here to run you through our results and uh, hopefully give you some insight as to what's going on in the business. Q2 was a difficult quarter for us. Uh, during the quarter, we announced that uh, we were revising our production target for 2017 uh, from 60,000 ounces to 52 to 57,000 ounces. We gave the reasoning for all of that, which was to do with uh, some logistical constraints. And uh, obviously the results for Q2 are evidence of some of those logistical constraints. Donna will talk us through the production issues in detail. Uh, but generally, uh, although we did have to put a revision out, uh, the Q2 results are, are not that bad. Uh, operationally, the mine still uh, produced a, a slightly improved a gold production. Um, there was good cash generation. Uh, the average realized gold price, which we don't really control, uh, was there, thereabout. And uh, we spent a lot of money on capital projects. So in the, in the greater scheme of things, the team at Blanket continues to do a very good job in maintaining gold production, uh, advancing the central shaft uh, project, which Donna will talk about, um, doing all the other normal capex work of sustaining capex at Blanket Mine, along with uh, the sinking of declines, a lot going on at Blanket Mine. So we are, we are still proud of the Q2 result. We're very cognizant of the fact that uh, we have to remain profitable, cash generative, because all of our projects are self-funded, and uh, we continue to achieve that. So we are pleased with the overall outcome of Q2, but I think it's probably better now that we get into some of the detail and uh, we, we look at the numbers uh, in more detail at specific line item level. So let me hand over and we can uh, carry on this discussion with Donna and Mark Learmont who joined me today. Thank you very much. Well, let's start on, um, on page three and just, just run through some of the, um, the highlights of, of quarter two. Um, starting off with gold production, it was pretty much flat uh, quarter two, 2017, compared to quarter two, 2016, about 12,500 ounces. Um, Dana will talk in a bit more detail um, in a few moments about gold production. Um, the unmined cost per ounce increased from $629 an ounce to $696. Again, a bit more, bit more detail on um, production costs later, but that increase was largely due to the effect of uh, lower grade, uh, which means that um, you're, you're moving the same amount of tonnage, but there's just less gold in what you're moving. Uh, all in sustaining costs came down quite nicely from uh, $930 an ounce to $855, um, and that reflects, um, that, that sort of counterbalances the, uh, the higher on-mine cost. But the fall in the all-in sustaining cost was largely due to uh, reduced GNA, head office GNA, and also the benefit of the export incentive credit. Um, the best way to think of that is as a um, as a uh, rebate on the on the five percent royalty that we paid to the government. Average realised gold price is, is what it is, uh, reasonably stable, um, one thousand two hundred and thirty five dollars an ounce for the quarter. Gross profit uh, was just over five million dollars, uh, which compares to about five point nine million dollars for the comparable quarter. Um, and that really, that decrease, that decrease of about a million nine hundred thousand dollars, is really due to the um, slightly higher on mine costs because we're, produce, we're moving more tons, um, and the flat revenues. Net profit attributable to shareholders does show a significant um, decrease uh, from three point six million in the uh, in the uh, quarter two of twenty sixteen down to just under $700,000 in this quarter. You must remember that the, um, the Q2 2016 number increase, includes um, about $3.2 million of, um, of the proceeds of uh, the sale of some treasury bills. So 3.2 gross, um, after tax was about 2.4. And so that, that quarter, quarter two, the comparable quarter, uh, is, um, is um, you know, uh, slightly higher than, you, well, significantly higher than you'd expect in the ordinary course of events. 
Um, so what we do is when we, we strip all of those funny things out, um, and that's how we get to the adjusted basic earnings per share, which as you can see um, fell from 30.5 cents uh, in quarter two of 2016 to about 19 cents in quarter two of um, 2017. So the, the extent to which um, adjusted basic earnings fell was a, a smaller fall than the net profit attributable to shareholders. And one of the key features of that was the, um, was the reversing out of the, the profit of the sale of the treasury bills. Cash and cash equivalents was broadly stable uh, between 10 and $11 million, which is where we're comfortable at. Um, cash from operating activities, again, was quite strong in the quarter. Uh, 4.7 million dollars in the um, in the quarter. Just turning to the um, income statement on on page four, um, revenue as you'd expect broadly flat because uh, production was flat and the uh, the gold price was largely flat. The royalty stays at um, five percent of sales, so not much change there. Production costs increased uh, slightly from 8.1 million dollars to 8.8 .8 million dollars. A um, bit more detail on that in a moment, but that's largely because we were moving more tons, uh, albeit at a lower grade. GNA down, as I've mentioned, down from $1.8 million in uh, quarter two of 2016, down to about one and a half of quarter two 2017. That one and a half in, um, in, in the quarter, that includes um, a few hundred thousand dollars worth of, um, of uh, extra expense associated with the uplisting uh, from the OTCQX to NYSE. So I'm pretty comfortable that um, something less than one and a half million dollars would be a, um, a sustainable GNA run rate for the business. Depreciation largely unchanged. Uh, we won't, you won't see an increase in the depreciation charge until uh, we start to operate, until we start production from the central shaft, at which point then we will start to depreciate the very significant capital investment we've made in central shaft. Um, so you can expect in future years that depreciation to increase, but for the time being, this day is relatively relatively stable. Other income of $0.6 million in the quarter, that reflects largely the, um, the export incentive credit, uh, which is 3.5% of our gold revenues. Um, and there was no comparable number for that because in 2016, uh, we actually didn't recognize that, um, that, um, that export incentive credit until we'd actually physically received the money at the end of the year. Having received the money and continue to receive the money, we're now comfortable that we can, uh, we can account for that on an accruals basis. Share-based payment is a significant expense in the quarter, about a million dollars. There are two components to that. Uh, one component is the uh, cash settled uh, equity expense, which relates to the uh, LTIP plan uh, for senior management. That's about $150,000. And you'll see, you will continue to see each quarter a charge coming through for that. Um, then the other much bigger component uh, related to a uh, an equity settled um, ch charge, which arose on a modification to the um, indigenization transaction. Uh, what we've done is we've, um, we've changed the terms of the facilitation loans in two respects. We've uh, reduced the interest rate uh, from LIBOR plus 10 to 7.25%, and that reduction reflects a, a general reduction in interest rates in Zimbabwe. Um, and also we've, we've formalized a situation whereby if Blanket doesn't pay a dividend in a quarter, uh, the interest on the facilitation loans will be suspended. And so there will only be interest on facilitation loans in those quarters where Blanket pays a dividend. And the, the rationale for doing that is to make sure that we don't end up in a situation where the facilitation loans, which are about $30 million, sort of spiral out of control as a result of compounding interest. It was never our intention when we went into the um, indigenization transactions in 2012 to have an unsustainable debt situation. Um, it is the case that, we've come, that uh, Blanket hasn't really paid meaningful dividends since uh, late 2014. Uh, that's not something we'd expected. Um, production has broadly been as we expected, but from time to time the gold price has been a lot lower than we expected, and we continue to spend a lot of money at, um, at the, uh, the central shaft. So recognising, in, in the context of that, we thought it appropriate to, to make sure that the facilitation loans uh, remain manageable for all parties. Um, operating profit, therefore, $7 million in quarter two of 2016, down to 3.2 in uh, 2017. And I guess the other significant component here is the tax charge. Even though the, uh, the profit before tax has fallen from 6.9 million to 3.2, the tax charge has only fallen from 2.4 million to 2.1 million. So the effective tax rate is, um, is about 60%. I'll come on to that in a bit more detail, but a significant component of that tax is withholding tax, 
uh, which reflects the movement of money in and out of Zimbabwe. It has nothing to do with profitability. And also a very significant, significant component is deferred tax, but a bit, I'll come on to that in a bit more detail. So you've seen the, you can see the, um, the attributable earnings and the earnings per share, which we've already, already discussed. So on, a, on an IFRS basis, earnings per share for the quarter fell from 33.5 cents to 6.1, but adjusting out the non-recurring items and also deferred tax, uh, it fell from 30.5 to about 19 cents a share. Turn to page five, and, and that really goes into more detail on, um, on production and, uh, and revenues. And I think at that, at that point it's appropriate for, uh, for Dana to talk, about, um, to talk about some of the production issues that we faced in the quarter. So I'll hand over to Dana here. Thank you, Mark. Uh, quarter 2000 produ production was uh, adversely affected by low grades, continued logistical issues on 22 level, and then an unfortunate fatal accident we had. Um, and the, the main issue really was the fact that you know, while we're building a new mine, we've, we've got to do what we have on one level, on 22 level, on the old mine. Now, just to take you a step back, uh, three years ago when this new revised life of mine plan started, we could only do 400 tons per day on, on the bottom level of the mine. Uh, we then do, did a loop and we, we um, added some, some uh, silos. And currently we're doing about 1,400 tons per day on that same level. So more than three times more. Uh, the problem is that we, we uh, sort of reached uh, our ceiling on that level, and you know, we, and therefore we announced in May that we we going to reduce the uh, the production uh, forecast for the rest of the year um, because we've got to make sure that it's it's a it's a balancing act. While while we're building this new mine, we also want to keep on increasing our production to keep on paying for this new central shaft. And you know, to be able to do that, you need to develop the new areas and make sure that you have enough stopes to produce the answers that we, we want to produce going forward. And uh, unfortunately, this, this year so far, we couldn't handle all the tons we wanted. So it was either make a choice and reduce the reef tons that we 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 mining uh, to enable us to do the, the waste development that we need to do, and especially as far as capital development is concerned. Now, if you look at the reef tons, uh, it's up from 120,590 tons uh, um, last year, uh, up to 136,000 uh, tons for the three months this year. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, quite a nice increase in tons, but the grade dropped from 3.47 to 3.25. So, what we then decided was that, first of all, we need to, to uh, make sure we, we get our development, and especially in the areas below 750. Because the areas below 750, that's the decline area, into AR South is a higher grade area, and also the six months area, which is in a blanket or body, which is also a higher grade area. And we struggled to get these tons from specifically these, area, these two areas, and that's why the grade was lower than we, we planned. Um, so <clears throat> what we then did was, and especially you can see that in the results of, of July, which was in the MDNA, uh, improved results, we completed the conveyor in, the, in a decline that helped us to increase our tonnages from ARSELF. And I'm, I'm glad to say that we saw the uh, increase in grade as, as far as that is concerned as we increased the tonnages from the higher grade areas. And the other main focus area is then obviously six winds area and uh, the blanket ore body. Now that, uh, the tonnage from, from blanket is increasing on a monthly basis in that uh, um, area as well. So what did we do to have these improvements? You know, first of all, um, we brought in some guys that did done some time studies for us on 22 level and try to optimize uh, the tramming and the flow of ore on that level. So we started off by identifying bottlenecks and solving these bottlenecks. There were three main issues that we, we found. First of all, um, we had a couple of places on the tracks we had to fix and then complete the conveyor that I mentioned and get that um, going. Uh, secondly, we found that with our electrical problems we have, that every time we have an electrical trip out with the uh, spikes and, and, and volts, that um, we, um, we lose our compress compressed air. And although we've got backup generation, we lose about 30 minutes. And then every time these compressors need to recharge. So you lose between 30 and 40 minutes underground where the guys can't really load 
with our uh, compressed air loaders. So that had an effect on, on, on the loading at the draw points of our stopes. And then we doubled the, 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 the third issue is we doubled our people that we put underground on a daily basis. When we started this project, we only put it down about 300 people per shift down the mine. Now that increased to 600 people. And uh, we had to look, look at the logistics of putting those people down. The furthest places to Eureka, it took us between two and a half hours, up to three hours to get the people to those areas. And then to tram from those areas back to the tips, which is also um, more than three kilometers. It took us about 90 minutes on, on, a, on a round trip. So we rescheduled the shaft schedule and uh, started pu putting people down earlier. And I'm, I'm happy to say that it seems like we, uh, we solved that issue. Um, and also to increase the tram tramming times, we did some uh, um, surveys. We've got a four hour re-entry period after we blasted because of natural ventilation on the mine. In certain areas, um, we managed to get that down to two hours after we surveyed and got permission to increase the tramming hours on, the, on, the, on those uh, areas and therefore adding to our tramming time. Um, and that started to bear fruit in, uh, in July as well. Now with that, um, the people knew what was coming as far as uh, the new life of mine plan is concerned. But uh, you know, it's a different issue that you know you need to, to increase year on year, but to be able to handle it is another issue. So we started with change management and a, and a team development program. And um, you know, also after the, the fatal accident, uh, just to help the people to, to, to deal with these issues and start working together as a team to improve um, the situation on the mine. Now, that is also starting to bear fruit. And, uh, you know, at this stage, uh, we hope that during the second half of the year that we can improve on the six, first six months, which is normally the case. Um, we, uh, we start off slower uh, during the first six months because we have less production days. And then end of strong, the end of the year, you know, similar to the last couple of years that, that uh, we've been busy at, at Blanket. So um, at this stage, um, we've got these uh, interventions that's ongoing, and uh, hopefully that we will, will, will be able to report a stronger six, half, uh, six months uh, for the rest of the year. Thank you, Dana. Uh, page six just puts the quarterly production in context. It's, it's a series of charts we've used before, so you can see the gold production in the, um, in the top chart, and the bottom chart kind of breaks that down into tons milled, grade, and recovery. And just to reinforce the point that Dana made, you can see quite clearly that in terms of the tons milled uh, in the quarter, quarter two, you know, it wasn't bad actually compared to previous quarters. It was the, uh, it was the lower grade that did the damage. Turning to page seven, just a bit of information on, um, on production costs. So as I've mentioned before, the, um, the on-mine cost was up, uh, the ordinary sustaining cost was down. Um, the cost, interestingly, the cost, cost per ton milled was rel remained relatively stable. So what that, what's that, what that tells us is that as we, as we improve the grade, and typically we also see an improvement in recovery at higher grades, we would expect to see the, um, the cost, per cost per ounce to come down quite, quite sharply. On top of that, we've got this uh, a theme that we've, we've mentioned many times, which is because the fixed cost component at blanket is very high, something like two-thirds to 70% of the costs are fixed. As we increase production, that's a further, that should be a further benefit in terms of reducing the average cost per ounce. And you can see here how the production costs are uh, broken down into uh, salaries and wages, online uh, consumables and um, exploration safety and online administration. Turning to page eight, just, bre just a breakdown here of the um, of the GNA costs. So this is these GNA costs. These are the costs associated with the uh, office in Johannesburg, um, the uh, one-man office in London, the uh, small office in St Helier, and the office in um, in Harare. Uh, so nothing here to do with with production. And he just breaks it down into, into the various components. I guess the most significant element, even though, it's a, as I mentioned, the, the, in overall terms, uh, for the six months, uh, we saw quite a pleasing fall in the, um, in the GNA cost, down from 3.2 million to 2.9 million. Within that, you can see that employee costs increased, 
uh, from about 1.1 million to 1.375 million. And that's largely because we've um, strengthened and deepened the, uh, the head office team, specifically by um, employing a uh, general counsel and company secretary, uh, and also an investor relations person as well. But the, correspond the corresponding effect of that is that we've reduced our um, advisory service fees, which comprises legal fees and external advisors. That's come down from about a million dollars to 350,000, because we can simply just do more stuff internally. And if we do need external advisors, because we've got an in-house um, legal counsel, we're just better at managing external lawyers, so we get more value out of them. And so that's a very significant um, improvement in the overall business. And it also improves our, um, our internal compliance and uh, de-risks us from a regulatory perspective. Um, so we're very pleased to see that. Turning to page nine, I did mention, I did mention uh, earlier that the effective tax rate was quite high. And there are three components to the, uh, to the tax rate. There's um, income tax, uh, which was 870,000 at Blanket Mine and a small amount in South Africa. And that's, that's income tax, that's just regular corporation tax on profits. In Zimbabwe, you take your, your accounting profit, um, you add back depreciation, you add back the royalty, and you deduct capex, 100% of capital, capital 100% deduction for capex in the quarter. So the actual effective um, income tax rate, certainly in, in, in Zimbabwe, is by no means onerous. Um, on top of that, you have a, uh, a withholding tax on the management fee, and that is the ma that is withholding tax on the management fee that's paid from Blanket Mine to uh, Caledonia Mining South Africa. Um, that was at about 15%. Uh, we believe that may now go up to 30% because of some changes in the, uh, in the way that the, um, the, the Zimbabwean authorities deal with uh, management fees. Going forward, it's, um, it's an area that we'll look at um, changing, the way, changing the business model so that hopefully we can um, reduce that, um, that withholding tax or eliminate it completely. Um, so we would, we would expect that to, uh, to fall away somewhat. And deferred tax, again, that's another very significant component. That's a non-cash tax. And that just, that just reflects the difference between the accounting treatment for a capital investment and the tax treatment for capital investment. Um, in due course, when we, actually, when, we, when we tail off the capex spend, we would see that deferred tax begin to, begin to reverse. But that explains why the overall tax rate is so high, because critically, the withholding tax component is, is determined by the amount of money that's moving and not by the profitability of the business. Turning to page uh, 10, you can see the uh, quarterly adjusted earnings per share. And again, just to repeat some of the comments I've made previously, you can see the adjustments that we make uh, from, uh, to, to the attributable profit on an IF, IFRS basis to get to the, um, the adjusted um, profit. And the key, the key things that we adjust for are things like um, equity settled share payment, uh, equity settled uh, share based expense, so that's the charge arising on the modification to the um, indigenisation loan, indigenisation loan that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we take out deferred tax, and in the comparative period, you can also see we took out, we reversed out the profit arising on the sale of the uh, treasury bills that were held by um, held by Blanket. But I've mentioned the, um, you know, the fact the adjusted earnings per share. I've previously mentioned the fact that it falls from thirty and a half cents to eighteen point nine cents. On page 11, cash flow remains strong. Uh, so you can see that um, in, the, in the quarter, net cash from operating activities was $4.7 million. We then spent about $4.2 million in capex. Of that 4.2, uh, about 4 million was on expansion projects and a relatively small component, a couple hundred thousand, was on sustaining. Uh, we paid the dividend, that's the, that's the, that's the, the Caledonia dividend of just over $700,000. Uh, we, we repaid a, a term loan facility, uh, 375000 that was that's a term loan facility held by um, Blanket in Zimbabwe. And you'll see an effective um, $146,000 of share repurchase. As you recall, we did a, um, we did a, uh, a effective takeout of all um, shareholders who held fewer than 100 shares. Um, and that was as part of the sort of share consolidation that we did in um, June, July. And that gave rise to an effective share repurchase, um, which has reduced the number of shares in issue and also significantly reduced the number of individual shareholders that we have. We've taken, we've taken out several thousand shareholders, um, which may give rise to um, a sort of a modest uh, reduction in, in the costs of servicing the shareholder base. We have shareholder approval to... Um, to do further share repurchases, which is something we'll consider in the future. But, uh, but right now, I think in the context of a very significant capex spend and um, 10 or $11 million of cash in the bank, that's not something I'd expect us to do in the short term, but we do have that flexibility uh, in the future. 
So closing that cash was, was about 10.8 million, which compares you know, pretty similar to pretty stable to what it was at the comparative period of 10 and a half million dollars, which is where we're comfortable. Uh, page 12 just gives you a little bit of um, a little bit of sort of comparative information on our dividend uh, compared to the dividends of, um, of other companies. Uh, clearly, the dividend yield varies according to the share price, but it's, it's, it's about 4.3 percent, and that compares favourably with the dividend yield of um, of other um, other resource companies operating in Africa. And you can see you've also got the payout ratio as well. The balance sheet on page 13 um, remains strong. Um, fixed assets increases from 64 million to 71, given, given the extent of the capital investment. On the, um, on the uh, current asset side, there's nothing really untoward there. The, I guess the only significant thing is the increase in prepayments from 800,000 to 3.6 million. And that reflects the prepayments that we have to make for um, capital equipment. Uh, in the, in the pro whilst, it's being, whilst it's being fabricated for us. Um, that in due course will come down as, those, as that work in progress and that prepayments uh, converts, converts up, to, um, up to fixed assets. So nothing particularly untoward in terms of the uh, current assets um, and also on the, on the current liabilities as well. So it's a pretty stable balance sheet. And then I'll hand over to Steve to um, just to deal with some, some operational matters and talk about the, um, the outlook for the business. Thank you, Mark. Um, Donna has covered most of the topics under the operational matters, but I must spend some time talking about safety. We have had two tragic uh, fatalities on the mine in the last couple of months, one in the quarter and one in July. And we take safety extremely seriously at Blanket. We have instituted some remedial actions where we have identified a potential source of where uh, discipline has fallen down and the analysis that we've done has actually shown that these unfortunate safety incidents not just the fatalities but incidents of deviations from operating procedures is occurring in younger uh, workers and people who have had less uh, experience at the mine. Uh, we understand that uh, we are demanding more and more from our workforce, but uh, we are absolutely non-negotiable on the factor of safe production of gold. So we have had to take a step back and we are addressing the issues of discipline and the correct safety procedures. And we've, we have reiterated to all of our members of staff that they have a right to demand a safe environment. They have a right to demand that their fellow workers operate in a, in a safe manner. And uh, we are doing some work with behavioral matters through some very well experienced consultants who will help us deal with these issues with, with our employees. Uh, safety procedures and training has been an ongoing issue at Blanket. Just 12 months ago, we had our NOSA audit, whereby we, we got four out of five star rating. And it's not as if the eye is taken off the ball at Blanket at all, but uh, you just cannot, cannot um, uh, stop focus and stop talking and stop training around safety matters. So I must just reiterate to all our shareholders that uh, the unfortunate incidences that we have had we take extremely seriously and we, we are dealing with them uh, in the best way that we, we believe is, is uh, appropriate. Then if we just look at uh, outlook for, for the future and uh, obviously the primary focus area for us in terms of our life of mind development and the development of the new mine below the 22 level is the focus of an 80,000 ounce gold production by 2021. That, uh, we believe, is still absolutely on track and the components that get us there in terms of central shaft, declines, capital development but below 22 level are all progressing and uh, we are still confident that, uh, that the uh, ultimate goal of 80,000 ounces is, uh, is an achievable target. We recognize as management that uh, this is an evolving process a life of mine plan developed in 2014 that takes us all the way through to 2021 obviously will need modification as you progress and uh, that is what 
our job is, and that is why we had to recognize the need for a, a production target revision to 52 to 57,000 ounces, because there are components that were just not in harmony with gold production at a higher level. Capital development is absolutely essential. Deep drilling is absolutely essential. And uh, deep drilling can't take place if you haven't had development in the deeper levels of the mine, which give you the opportunities of drill cubbies. So there are many moving parts, uh, but we believe that our team on the ground uh, understands them, manages them, and uh, we continue to keep very, very focused on that ultimate goal of 80,000 ounces by 2021. Uh, we will continue to do deep, deep level exploration at the mine because the future of this mine is the identification of reserves and resources uh, below the 22 level. It justifies the capital expenditure. We already have uh, knowledge and we have published knowledge of improved confidence around deeper level resources and uh, we will continue to do that. Uh, we are spending money and therefore we will be informing shareholders in the market of the results of that, uh, that spend on, on deep, uh, deep level exploration. Obviously this project, as we, we, we say uh, every time we talk to you, is a self-funded project. So our cash management principle will continue to be conservative. We are committed to the dividend at the Caledonia mining level. Uh, we will practice conservative cash management so that we can protect the funds that we need for the capital uh, that Blanket needs to spend and that we can continue to, to create Blanket as a dividend payer which will enable funds to flow up to Caledonia and therefore uh, enable us to continue with the dividend at the Caledonia level. So we are half the way through the project um, if from a time perspective, but from an actual physical perspective, the shaft is well advanced. Uh, it is about 870 meters below level, uh, surface level. That doesn't sound like we've got many meters to go, but you're now at the stage where you need to do uh, infrastructure development uh, as you go deeper and deeper. We're at the 26, me, uh, 26 level. That needs some infrastructure uh, cutting into the, the or, uh, towards the ore bodies, and that is taking place. So your sink is not a linear uh, progression from now onwards, but we still are very much on track in terms of, of how we see the shaft developing. And again, I reiterate, the ultimate goal of 80,000 ounces by 2021 is still very, very much on the table. So thank you for joining us for this Q2 uh, presentation. And uh, as ever, we will keep the market informed as things develop. And uh, we once again uh, have enjoyed talking to you. Thank you.